Heavenly Father, we give you praise and thanks, and we ask for your blessing. We praise you for the gift of life, these new young lives, and we just ask that they be in your care and that they be filled with your spirit, and that their parents and godparents, the first teachers of the faith, will also be empowered by your spirit. I think it's always good uh, at all liturgy to remind ourselves, but particularly in baptism, to remind ourselves of uh, the sacramental signs that Jesus gave us in all the seven sacraments. In baptism, all that's necessary is water and the sign of the cross. Jesus walked into the river, you know, and we had the Trinity. You know, there was a voice from above and there was uh, a dove and he was in the river. So, you know, water and, and, and the sign of the cross, the Trinity, are all that's really necessary, but in the wisdom of the church, we have, we have liturgy, you know, which gives us a little bit of a extra time and, and you know, scripture to, to be empowered, to, to have him reveal himself to us. But I just invite you as a community of faith to do that for the next 15, 20 minutes, to enter into the liturgy, uh, to allow God to, uh, to listen and to be empowered uh, by the liturgy and by the scripture and ask for his blessing for these children and for their parents and godparents. My name is uh, John. I'm a deacon here. I'm also a parent and a grandparent, so I certainly share in the, in the excitement that you may feel. Not that a priest doesn't, but, you know, let's face it, it's different, right? And so uh, I thank you for that. I also thank you, parents, for bringing your children here. Not necessarily here to St. Petronel, but here to the church. You know, you're living part of your baptismal commitment, even though you may not have made that yourself. You know, it may have been made by when you were an infant by your parents and godparents, but your commitment and promise is to pass on the faith. And just by bringing your children here, you're making a public statement, and you are, in fact, passing on the faith. And so I, I thank you for that. You're strengthening the body of Christ. Uh, as far as uh, logistics go, and anyone that wants to stand up and take pictures, you can do that at any time. We'll pray our liturgy right here, and then each baby, with its family, if they so desire, can come up you know, to the font. We have a hundred-year-old font. It's very small. Uh, for you that just have babies here, <laughs> we'll use the font. But well, we have actually a seven-year-old and, and two four-year-olds also to be baptized. And so uh, they wouldn't really, it doesn't really work there. So we have a separate one for them. So let's pray together. <laughs> Your families have experienced great joy at the birth of your children, and the church shares your happiness. Today, this joy has been brought to you by the church, and you give thanks to God for the gift of your children to celebrate new birth in the waters of baptism. Our community rejoices with you, for today the number of those baptized in Christ will be increased. We offer you our support in raising your children in the practice of the faith. Therefore, let us prepare ourselves participate in this liturgy and celebration, listening to God's word, praying for these children, renewing our commitment to the Lord. I'm going to start out with a couple of questions for the parents and godparents. First of all, what name do you give your daughters? And what do you ask of the church? <laughs> okay. And are you ready to journey with them throughout their lives and be an example of our faith? And what do you name your child? Okay. And what do you ask of the church? Okay. Are you also ready and prepared to, uh, to journey with them, to be an example of our faith, and uh, make sure they're raised in a Christian environment? And what do you name your child? Those of you who didn't hear that, Ignatius Clement. <laughs> Beautiful name. Uh, they're all beautiful, but I mean, this is destined to be a pope, right? <laughs> a pretty, pretty solid name. Uh, and what do you ask of the church? Are you ready to journey with them and be a witness of our faith? And what do you name your child? Okay. And what do you ask of the church? And we've got... You too, yeah. Are you ready to journey with them? to be an example of our faith, to make sure they're raised in a Christian environment.
In asking for baptism, you're undertaking the responsibility of raising them in the faith and keeping God's commandments, that they love the Lord as their neighbor, as Christ taught us. Parents, do you clearly understand what you're undertaking? The church and God receives you, children, with great joy. In her name, I claim you for Christ by the sign of the cross. In the early Christian days, you know, so much of our faith is based on tradition, right? And in the early Christian days, those to be baptized, or those already newly baptized, were welcomed by the community with the sign of the cross on their forehead or on the top of their head. So parents and godparents and myself, we need to do that. But anyone else that would like to do that, I encourage you. I'm going to pause for a few minutes. And as a welcoming from the community, I want you to come up and trace the, uh, on your family's uh, baby the sign of the cross on their heads. Parents and godparents for sure. And Yeah, we just want to step up and, you know, welcome her. Okay, parents and grandparents for sure. Anybody else they would like to welcome her? Uh, with the sign of our faith. Yeah, if you want to stand up. Maybe. Pushing around. Well, let's go over here towards the steps so they can see another step. Is that enough for him? So for those of you who have other babies here, uh, if they start crying, don't worry about a thing. Nobody cares. It's a baptism. I don't care. I know it kind of disrupts the celebration for you, but really, nobody cares, so try not to worry. You could scream. I have a microphone. You could scream all you want. <laughs> Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. People were bringing their children to Jesus that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me and do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter into it. Then he embraced them and blessed them by placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. So it's normal for us to show some type of gratitude when somebody gives us a gift, right? Just normal human nature, good manners. As parents, when we understand, and I think it happens naturally, that our children are just gifts, that we didn't really do anything to be entitled to our children. They were just given to us, their gifts. I think we automatically, again, human nature just kind of change our attitude, our commitment, and we respond you know, with gratitude. Baptism is a gift. It's a huge gift. We're anointed, we're blessed, we're cleansed. It's, it's an incredible blessing to be baptized. Of course, our response is what we've already asked, is that we pass it on, that we pass on the faith. The whole spirit of the sacrament is to pass on the faith. 
And the kind of faith that Jesus teaches about, probably more than anything else in his ministry, in the gospel, is the faith of a child. He always talks about the faith of a child. They have this relentless ability to let go and forget about yesterday and not worry about the next day. You know, stay up late, jump out of bed. You know, they just embrace life because they trust that anything they can't control, their parents will. Young children, like this. Same way we should be living, of course, with our Heavenly Father, trusting that whatever we can't control, we let go of and allow Him to control for us and embrace us and empower us. And so that's why he always talks about the faith of a child. And you know, we don't know much about Jesus until he was baptized. We probably know more historically than we do scripturally. Scripturally, all we know is Bethlehem. He was brought to the temple to be received, and he was lost in the temple when he was 12. Next thing we know, he's 30 years old, and he's being baptized. So once again, he teaches us about everything in life. He teaches us that ministry starts at baptism. Because after he was baptized, he went out into the desert, he prayed, he came back, and then he picked his apostles. So he started his ministry after his baptism. So we're called to do the same. We're called, and Jesus always pointed to the Father. He never took credit for anything, right? So we're called to teach our children, and that's my prayer for you, that our faith is not a private faith. It's, of course, bringing them here to be baptized. You're making a public statement. Teaching them the faith. Uh, making sure that they are taught the faith as they grow older and, and you know, whatever school that you decide will teach the faith for them. Uh, <clears throat> all of that is passing on the faith. But deep down, there's something else. You know, all of us in our, in our environments, without being a preacher, we all have the opportunity in all of our different environments, work and family and friends, to let people know who we are. Because if we don't, then because of our baptismal commitment, which we don't want to happen, of course, uh, any good decision that we might make might just get credited towards good human nature. It's not the case. We're empowered by the Spirit. And so, teach your children, please, that our faith is not a private one, and that when they have the opportunity, even though sometimes it presents embarrassment, we have to let people know who we are, and, and that our faith is really not a private one. I ask for that blessing for you and the godparents. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. Give these children new birth in baptism through the radiant divine mystery of your death and resurrection, Lord, and join them to your holy church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Make them faithful di disciples and witnesses to the gospel through baptism and confirmation. We pray to the Lord. Make their parents and godparents a shining example of faith to them. We pray to the Lord. And renew the grace of our baptism in each one of us. We pray to the Lord. Please respond. Pray for us. Holy Mary, Mother of God. Saint John the Baptist. Saint Joseph. Saints Peter and Paul. Saint Petronel. Almighty and ever-living God, you've sent your only Son into the world to drive out from us the power of Satan, the spirit of evil, and bring the human race, rescued from darkness, into the marvelous kingdom of your light. We humbly beseech you, set these children free from original sin, make them temples of your glory, and grant that the Holy Spirit dwell within them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. This is, first anointing is a very common oil. It's the oil of catechumens, the oil of the body. We're called to be united with Jesus, body and spirit. So may the strength of Christ our Savior protect you, and as a sign, we anoint you with the oil of salvation in the name of him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. It's also a, a part of an exorcism, right? What I didn't tell you before, because I didn't want you to start frustrating, is it needs to be somewhere between the neck and the waist. So whatever you need to do to prepare them, somewhere between the neck and the waist. 
You guys are good right there. Yeah. Because we're using these smaller fonts, we're going to ask God to bless this water. It's fresh water every time. God graciously bestows his abundant life through the sacrament of water on those who believe. Let us raise our minds to him and pray with one heart. O oh God, who by invisible power accomplished a wondrous effect through sacramental signs, and who in many ways have prepared water, your creation, to show forth the grace of baptism? O oh God, whose spirit in the first moments of the world's creation hovered over the waters, so that the very substance of water would even then take to itself the power to sanctify. O oh God, who by the outpouring of the flood foreshadowed regeneration so that from the mystery of one and the same element of water would come an end to vice and beginning of virtue. O God, who caused the children of Abraham to pass dry shod through the Red Sea so that the chosen people set free from slavery to Pharaoh would prefigure the people of the baptized. O God, whose son baptized by John in the waters of the Jordan was anointed with the Holy Spirit as he hung upon the cross, gave forth from his side water and blood. After his resurrection, commanded his disciples, go forth and teach the nations and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Look now, we pray, upon the face of your church and graciously unseal for her the fountain of baptism. May this water receive by the Holy Spirit the grace of your only begotten Son, so that human nature created in your image washed clean through the sacrament of baptism from all the squalor of the life of old, be found worthy to rise to the life of the newborn children through water and the Holy Spirit. So may the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we pray, come down through your Son to the fullness of this font so that all who have been buried will rise again with life through Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever Amen. Okay. I think she's winning. Sorry. <laughs> now we have the renunciation of sin, the profession of faith, our baptismal promises. It's going to be directed to the parents and godparents, but all of you are invited. I welcome you to renew your baptismal promises. So I ask parents and godparents to stand. Through the sacrament of baptism, the children you have presented are about to receive the love of God through new life by water and the Holy Spirit. On your part, you must strive to bring them up in the faith so that this divine life may be preserved from the contagion of sin and grow in them day by day. If your faith makes you ready to accept this responsibility, mindful of your own baptism, renounce sin, profess your faith in Christ Jesus, the faith of the church in which they are about to be baptized. So parents and godparents, I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? 
Do you believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it through Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, you can all be seated, but uh, the Craig family, if you'd like the two girls to come up, and if you guys like to come up, you may, especially the kids. Yeah. All right, I think we're gonna go over here. And you could use the stool and you're first. You actually are first. I think mean, she does enough that it works. So she's first. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Did you want to come up? You guys can come up. Come on. Come on over here. Don't put the God mode in. I have a job for you afterwards, but the God mode is going to stay right here. You guys come up here. Yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay, parents, is it your will that Olivia and Avery be baptized in the faith that you just professed? Okay. All right. Olivia May. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Avery Ryan, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. here for a few minutes. Yeah. Just you four for sure, but I mean, if they want to, that's fine. Okay, Cora. We're going to go over here. Parents, is it your will that Cora may be baptized in the faith that you just professed? Okay. Cora may. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Up here. 
just slide down a little bit and kind of face the crowd. You can stay here with him if you want. Okay, Ignatius. You're all welcome to come a little closer if you'd like. So if you come right over here, then you could kind of put her back to me. All right, parents. Is it your will that Ignatius be baptized in the faith that you just professed? Yes. Ignatius Clement, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Yeah. Great. I'm also going to ask you to stay up here. I want you to stay here because I'm going to use a big one now. Yeah. Okay, Brianna. We don't normally use that, uh, but because there's a camera. Oh. Then, yeah. 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 Okay. I think you should go on the step. Yeah. Brianna, Mary. Okay. Okay, parents. Is it your will that Brianna be baptized in the faith that you just professed? Okay. Uh, I don't help her. Yeah. I don't think you need to hold it. Do you want to want to use the stuff? You want to hold it? Okay. Brianna Mary, I baptize you in the name of the Father. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. It still looks okay. Here it is. <laughs> okay, I'm going to just ask you four to stay up here. You can. All right, you can, the rest of you can be seated. Two, three, four. This is not a very common oil at all. This is sacred chrism. It's an olive oil. You remember when Noah kept looking for uh, vegetation, finally the dove came back with an olive branch. The church has always used olive oil for new life, for baptism, confirmation, holy orders. It's the oil of the spirit. Christ. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, has freed you from sin, given you new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and joined you to his people. He now anoints you with the chrism of salvation, so that you may remain members of Christ, priest, prophet, and king unto eternal life. So this will be on a forehead.
anybody watch that? you probably noticed that a, a priest's stole comes across both sides of the chest where a deacon's only one side but we are called you know in our private and faithful life to to bring that forth like i mentioned before and and uh be a witness whenever we have that opportunity uh to uh, just by what you're doing now you know you're making a public statement and throughout our lives we'll be called to that and so we have a stole it's a a priestly garment uh, and use the, this one for the babies. In the early days, all, the, all those to be baptized would wear a white robe. Uh, but the white robe has become kind of like a fancy little wedding dress. So now they use. <laughs> let's use these for that. That's okay. You're going to get a bigger one. You can put that on her. And then she'll have this one here. You'll become a new creation and clothe yourself in Christ. See in this white garment an outward sign of your Christian dignity with your family and friends to help you by word and example. Bring that unstained to eternal life. Now the only candle that is lit during a baptism is the Easter candle, Paschal candle. Jesus overcame death, gave us life. He's the light of the world. I don't think there's any doubt on who's going to light this one. <laughs> if you could pass it, if you could light that and then pass it on to the other godfathers. Well, you know what? She gets, you get two. So keep this, and then he'll bring it back and like that. Yes. Actually, you hit. All right, just pass that on. Children, receive the light of Christ. Parents and godparents, this light is entrusted to you to be kept burning brightly so that your children, enlightened by Christ, may walk always as children of the light and persevering in the faith, run to meet the Lord when he comes with all the saints in the heavenly court. May the Lord Jesus, who made the deaf hear and the mute speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears and profess the faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus, may the deaf hear and the mute speak. May he soon grant that you receive his word with your ears, profess your faith with your lips, to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. So this is a priestly story. You're not a deacon, you're a priest. Right. Lord Jesus, may the deaf hear and the mute speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your mouth to proclaim his faith. Praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus, may the deaf hear and the mute speak. May he soon touch your ears to receive his word and your lips to profess the faith to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Lord Jesus, who made the deaf hear and the mute speak, grant that you may soon receive his word with your ears, profess it with your lips to the praise and glory of God the Father. Amen. Okay, please stand. Let's continue to ask for all of these blessings we have prayed for in the last 
15, 20 minutes or so in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Now, if you'd like to extend your hands towards the moms, The Lord God Almighty, through his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, brings joy to all Christian mothers as the hope of eternal life shines forth on their children. May he graciously bless the mothers of these children so that as they now give thanks for the gift of their children, they may always remain united with them in thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now towards the dads. May the Lord God Almighty, giver of life both in heaven and on earth, bless the fathers of these children. Together with their wives, they'll be, by word and example, the first witnesses of the faith. We ask that they be the best through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Thank you for praying with us. Congratulations. Congratulations, Mom. Aw, thank you very much. Thank you.